In this video, we'll use Excel to explore the Fibonacci numbers. The Fibonacci numbers, or Fib for short, start with 1 and 1. And then we form the next number in the sequence by adding the previous two. Now in Excel, the way to represent this, we start all equations with an equal sign. And if you forget the equal sign, you'll know it. And so what we're adding is what's in cell A2 plus what's in cell A3. Okay, not very impressive so far. But now what we do is we click on cell A4, and you see right now the cursor is this open cross. And in the bottom right corner, there's this little square. And if I move the cursor there, the cursor changes into a black cross. That square is called the fill handle. When I get the black cross cursor, I can drag down at the fill handle. And let's look at what's happening here. Now over here, I had this equation A2 plus A3. The way Excel heard that is A2 is kind of like the cell two above me, and A3 is the cell one above me. So when I move on to the next cell, the equation automatically updates. Now it's A3 plus A4. The one below, A4 plus A5, A5 plus A6, etc. This is very powerful. So let's take a look at some patterns in the Fibonacci numbers. The first pattern I want to look at is the ratio of consecutive terms. So I can make another equation here. I'll do the equal sign. And I'm going to take the term divided by the previous term. Okay, and once again, I select the cell, and then I move to the fill handle, bottom right, and drag. And I'll also mention that these formulas are updating again. You can see here now we have A4 divided by A3. The next one is A5 divided by A4, etc. Okay, but look at what's going on here. This ratio seems to be converging to around 1.618. If I want to get a few more decimal places, I can make this a little wider. 1.618034. Oh, now yeah, let's go down a little more. 1.618033399. Now this number, by the way, is called the golden ratio. It's very important in mathematics. There's a new book that just came out about it. All right, let's check out the ratio upside down. Okay, so this time another new equation, but I'll do a term divided by the term after it. And let's move that over a little bit more to match. Look at that. The terms in column D seem to be converging to one less than what we have in column C. Now one nice thing about recursive equations in Excel is that if we change the initial conditions, so in this case 1 and 1 were our initial conditions, if we change one of them, the entire column is going to update. So for example, if I change from the second one being a 1 to being a 3, I'll have what's called the Lucas numbers. And that those are the numbers in column A. Well, let's take a look. Look at that. They seem to be converging to the same thing. What if I change instead of 1 and 3? I don't know. Let's change to negative 34 and 56. Look at that. Still converging to the same thing. So we might make a conjecture that the initial conditions don't matter in terms of what these ratios end up being. And we'd have to do a little more work than this to prove that conjecture. And we might, depending on the level of your students, um, a lot of people can appreciate this without necessarily having the math background to be able to make the proof. Okay, so let's check out another pattern. I'm going to add a few columns. You see I'm highlighting five columns here. And I'll go to insert columns, and then I'll just, I just inserted five new columns. So mine are still over there. I just wanted to make a little room here. So in the last one, the last uh, pattern we tried dividing successive terms. Let's try multiplying 
successive terms. So product instead of a ratio. So same thing in terms of making a formula, but this time we'll do these two cells. And you might have noticed I've been clicking on the cells instead of typing them in. You can do that. For some reason, my students always want to type them in, but I like to click. All right, so let's take a look at these numbers. Well, I do see that, you know, 6 is 2 times 3, and 15 is 3 times 5. I don't offhand see a pattern, although that doesn't mean there isn't one there. Um, but one thing I think, you know, one nice thing to do when you don't see a pattern is just take the difference between terms and see if you see a pattern then. So I'm going to take the difference between this term and this term, subtract them. Now I don't really have the best label on this column because it doesn't really tell you the difference of what. And, uh, that depends on how, um, how strict you want to be about that sort of thing. But I guess I'm not being that strict right now. All right, so I do see a pattern when I look at these differences. Um, the pattern that I see is that they look like perfect squares to me. That's 3 times 3, that's 5 times 5. So let's just get a sense, let's just get a sense of if that continues, that pattern. And so now I'm going to use a function, and the square root is sqrt. You can use the help if you forget exactly what things are called. The parentheses open, then it gives you this little guide here to tell you about what to do. So I want the square root of the thing to the left. And hmm, well what I see here is more Fibonacci numbers. So that's kind of interesting. I might wonder here if I switch to the Lucas numbers, does that pattern go? It changes a little bit. It's still got a pattern, but what I'm seeing here are Lucas numbers. So definitely a lot of possibilities for further exploration here. This just skims the surface, but Excel is a really nice tool for investigating Fibonacci numbers.